Nice jersey. Very appropriate. I mean, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to come on without wearing it. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> didn't disappoint. Did you watch the game or catch the highlights last night? Oh my god! Well, I've just been catching up on some social media, and I just saw Bryson stop his um his home run grand slam. Whoa. <laughs> what I mean. Like it is just electric in that stadium. Like the pe- the sound is just like, I mean, like it, it happens to me when I, you know when you come out as an as a music act and you get a round of applause. But there's something else in that stadium where it's like just sheer joy and like celebration, and it's just wild. It's just crazy. Well, Callum, I think everyone is just waiting for an answer to this question. When are you coming to Philadelphia for a game <laughs> and to sing? Listen, Ryan, I have been tweeting. I've been tweeting with the Phillies. I've been talking behind the scenes about making something work. As you know, in this business, we've got to do it the right way. I've got to make sure that we we do it the right way. I know that baseball can be very superstitious, so I don't want to be jinxing anything. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to jinx anybody. Um, <laughs> But I am here and I am waiting and I love Philadelphia so much. I was there um, last year on my on my own tour, the Bridges Well tour, and we stopped in Philadelphia. And the love from, obviously, from the guys from the 2022 series, um, the, the love in Philadelphia was just unreal. And then to have a resurgence with this song and to be affiliated again with the Phillies is just, it's just the closest thing to magic. It's also kind of the most random uh, bromance, so to speak. Right. Were you I mean, a baseball fan prior to any of this? Well, so um, my, obviously being a, an Englishman, the closest we got to baseball was rounders. <laughs> um, but my dad uh, and my family live in, uh, some of my family live in Canada. So growing up, I was a, a Blue Jays fan. Um, and then ever, ever since I've been in America, since I signed my deal and, I signed out of LA and and I've been to see a couple of games and every t- every time I toured every time I had the opportunity I was I was out trying to watch some American sport because I just think it's I think it's electric but there's something particular about baseball that I absolutely love um, I kind of understand it as well which is good <laughs> I have no idea about offside in soccer but I know about baseball um, and it's just like I say it's just been amazing to have a, a song that I've been a part of you know, transcend in this way, you know, it's, it's, if you look at the lyrics, it's a tragically sad song about unrequited love. And yet here it is being used to celebrate these amazing successes of the Phillies, not, not just one year, but twice as well. Um, it's just been unreal. And I'm sure the first time was unexpected, but then after everything happened, did you expect it to take off for yet another playoff run? No, like you think, I mean, for me being the side of the water, you see all that all that happening in the stadium, you're like, oh my god, like everybody's going crazy over this song. And you know, as is this is is this industry, sometimes things can be quite flash in the pan, quite temporary. And I thought, oh well, that's really cool, and I'm so glad, and I love Philly as well. So I'm glad that I had that moment. But it kept being used. <laughs> and then and then I was in talks to come over, and you know, so I know sadly we didn't win the World Series last year, and I was like just you know what? I've got my jersey. I'm proud of Philly. I'm proud of the boys. Um, and then to ha- to, for it to happen again, I'm just like, like it's just crazy. And I, I you know, to, for it to be you, I know that the guys was like, New Year, new song, and I completely respect that. Um, but then I think th- they were having a bit of a rough time ahead, and mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the guy said, play the song, and you know, it's almost used as a bit of a good luck charm as well, which. You know, it's a hell of a responsibility, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, what an honour and what a privilege to just be a part of this and soundtrack in this moment. As soon as the Phillies want me there, I'm there. You know, if they, if they, I hope they go all the way and win it, and if they do, you won't be able to keep me away. You won't be able to keep me away. I, I just want to, I want to be there shoulder to shoulder with all of Philadelphia, just enjoying this incredible moment for not only the team, but for every person in Philadelphia that's supporting them. And Callum, it, it's not just the team, you know, I don't know if you've seen the video, but after the games, especially after the victories, everybody is leaving the ballpark, singing your song. They know all the words, doesn't matter their age, ethnicity, whoever they are. What does that mean to you that 
basically an entire city in a country where you're not even from has made this song truly a part of their lives. I mean, it makes me feel so at home. You know, I take no credit for the songwriting of this song. It was a, a song by an amazing artist called Robin. But to have a version that I was a part of being used by, by like you said, by everybody, no matter age or gender or, or, or background, like it just shows you that music is the universal language and it's transcending. And like I said, to be affiliated with that sense of joy and triumph and achievement, it just, it's just the power of magic that is like unifying everybody at that moment, just watching the crowd come alive. I mean, you know, when sometimes when you're in a stadium and everybody's shouting out different things, it just sounds like a wall of noise. Mm -hmm. But when the guys in, in the bank are just singing the song, it's just like a, a you know, thousand person choir. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. And, you know, it makes me from being a Yorkshireman, it makes me feel so welcome by America. It makes me feel so welcome by Philadelphia. And it just makes me want to come over and, and continue a beautiful relationship I already have. And, you know, it would be an honor to come and sing for Philadelphia. So you let me know. I mean, I'm already wearing the jersey. So like I'm not taking it off until I'm not taking it off until we, we win the series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna happen. Fingers crossed. Um, you know, the power of this magic, but also the power of social media. You know, we love seeing, you know, your tweets and kind of the response you're getting from the Phillies and the fans. Have you gotten to know any of the players personally? Any any cool stories you can share in this process? Oh my god, I would love to. I mean, I've been reached out by I think it's Barstool Philadelphia is one thing that I remember. And uh, I've had Xfinity Live <laughs> persuading me very heavily to play a gig there. Um, I think this, do you know what? I would love to have a, a, a relationship with with the team and as, especially with, with the players. Um, it would be so incredible to just have that personal touch. Um, but you know what? Look, there's, there's, there's more than a couple of games left here. And, you know, fingers crossed if it, if it means that I can have a, a one-to-one -one with the guys when you know you're doing the parade then that would be my dream um yeah yeah, yeah i'm just i'm very patiently waiting um i, I wake up in the morning after the games because you guys play very late in england time <laughs> <laughs> it's like two or three in the morning when you guys play but every morning i wake up and i'm just so many messages of positivity and support and everybody asking me to come philadelphia i'm sat here i'm waiting i have my jersey on and as soon as you want me there, as soon as I, we can make it work, I'm all yours. You're just you're just waiting for the call. And I can tell you too, Callum, as you know, I, I'm American, but I've lived in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Miami, and now Philadelphia. And even compared to sports stadiums and fans in those other major cities, nothing yeah. compares. Like Philadelphia is truly special in that way. You can hear it. You can, you can hear it. I mean, it's just electric. I, like I said, I was just watching that Grand Slam. And... People are just, it's like they have this energy that they can't contain. It is electric. And I can't imagine what it must feel like to stand in that stadium and just the 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 wash of like emotion. And I, I'm just I'm just so sad that I can't be part of it right now. But like I said, as soon as I, as soon as I can make it work with the guys, I'm there. And I I, I it would give me the greatest honor to just stand shoulder to shoulder with everybody and, and sing the song. So to clarify, you've been to Philadelphia at least once before, but it was for part of a tour stop. Yeah, so I actually was in Philadelphia uh, at the beginning of last year, and we did, uh, I was touring with a band called The Script, and we stopped in Philadelphia. It was the first big tour out of COVID for me, and so I'd, I'd, by the time I came to Philadelphia, I lost my voice. I was absolutely sobbing my heart out. I've never had to do that before. Um Told Philadelphia I'd made them make it up to them. As soon as we announced my headline show, uh, I was ext extremely um, grateful to have had a spot in Philadelphia. And when we came, it did not disappoint. The crowd was insane. It was a sold out show. The the magic in the room was just unbelievable. And since then, I've just had a, a beautifully close relationship with Philadelphia. Twenty two World Series, my song was being used. It's being used again. It would. I just can't wait to be back. Can't wait to be back having those Philly cheese steaks and singing along with everybody. Um, but yeah, very grateful to have been part of this again. And that was the the show that you made up was January 2022. I think it was uh, 
I might have to do a bit of research and get back to you on that, but, but it was definitely before the uh, before the World Series run and all the excitement. I think so. I think my my well my um my show from the Bridges World Tour, my headline shows was um was I think after the season, right? I think because oh. I'm not I sure. It was I don't in call me April, that. Francis. Okay, of, uh, last year. Yeah. But before okay. the song became the unofficial soon to be maybe official anthem we'll let you check out that fact i don't know for sure but okay. performed in april in philadelphia got it got it got it okay and then callum i know you've also been busy making new music talk a little bit about that as well yeah so i've just finished my my bridges well tour which took me all around the world it took me about two best part of two years to finish um and it's just been so amazing just traveling the world especially after the dip in covid you know, to be traveling around the world, to see people in a venue singing shoulder to shoulder has just been just been the, the honor of my life. Um, I'm out here writing in England, writing a third album now. Uh, I've just released a new single called At Your Worst, which is uh, a bit of a bop for me. I must admit, I love making people sob. I love getting people in the feels. Hmm. I, I'm the tear bringer. I love it. Um, but this one in particular is is kind of like, a bit more fun and a little bit more energy. And I don't know if that's probably from the collaborations I've done with Lost Frequencies and Jack Jones, um, two DJs I've worked really closely with. Um, a song that we did called Where Are You Now has just reached a billion streams on, on Spotify, which is crazy. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so my music sort of is changing and evolving. And, you know, um, my tour has just shown me how much I love to sing for people. Um, so I'm writing a whole new bunch of a new bunch of bangers, a new bunch of tear jerkers, and fingers crossed I'll be able to tour those around the world again uh, next year. Um, but yeah, just having the time of my life. Look, I worked in an office for eight years after uh, school and never knew what I wanted to do. Always dreamt that I would be able to do something like this, and now I do this, and it's the most surreal and humbling experience. I just hope I can do this until I'm a grey old man. I mean, I'm already <laughs> going a bit grey. Um <laughs> But I just want to do this for the rest of my life. Singing to people brings me the, the most amount of joy. And just spreading positivity and happiness and acceptance and all that good stuff. And then last question, Callum. I also think there's kind of a message here in the sense of uh, sometimes you put something out there and maybe you don't get that big reception right away. But that doesn't mean no. your time won't come, right? No. Or, you know, as, as we've seen with this song, like... The, the Spotify streams, you know, doubling years later because of a baseball team in a city that you didn't really have a connection to. Um, what do you what do you think about that message? It's kind of a life message in general. Yeah, I think, you know, we're in a world now where, you know, people people's old catalog songs, for example, in music who maybe thought, well, I really love that song, but it didn't have that reaction straight off the bat. You know, now these songs are being used more than ever. And I think it's down to, you know, largely down to TikTok and to the power of social media that a song can just have a resurgence. I mean, Kate Bush with Stranger Things is a perfect example. And, you know, again, with the Phillies on this season with, with Dancing on My Own, there's there's, a, there's an opportunity, I think, um, for, for any art that might have not, like you said, had its moment straight away um, to have it again. And I think, like you said, from a life perspective, it's like, you know, always chase your dreams and chase them passionately. And if it doesn't work out, that's not to say that it, it won't work out in the future. You know, I, I'm a big believer in, in fate and, and, and all that good stuff. And I, I just, I keep doing what I do. And even though I, sh I think maybe I should be doing some more TikToks and maybe I should be doing the, the dancey stuff. And I just stick to what I know is true to me mm -hmm. because I live and die by the sword like that, you know? And, and I've just been so overwhelmed to see a song that I thought, you know, I thought when I sang it on Britain's Got Talent many, many years ago that that was the moment. And then I released it as a single, and I thought that was the moment. Um, and then I, I had it with Philadelphia last year and again, and, and then it's this season, and it never stops impressing me. Um, and, you know, like you say, you, the, the takeaway message from that is just, you know, always aim high and, and never look back, and you never know where, where things might take you. Just keep knocking on those doors and, you know, life has a funny way of working itself out. Perfect. Well, Callum, thank you so much. And hopefully thank maybe we'll see you at the celebration when we win the World Series.
fingers crossed. I am literally, I'm, I'm singing all the way from over here. I'm singing all them good vibes. I've got my jersey on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a hashtag Red October. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Anything else, uh, Callum or Lisa, anything else we didn't already discuss that you guys think is important to include? I thought that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Yeah, I like, think... Good on my end, if, if good on Cal's. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm good. I mean, I have some real special news coming. Um, that, that'd be really cool for people to keep their eyes out. Um, and also, I, I, I guess, I, given the opportunity, I do want to say to anybody who has... Um, followed me from the beginning or any new fans from from the Philly success I just want to say a heartfelt thank you for for supporting me and, and for following my journey as well it really means the world oh I love it and like I said I call it the most random bromance and it's it's beautiful to see <laughs> <laughs> all these things that don't go together but has become this beautiful thing right <laughs> I, I th I, and I'm here for it every day of the week yeah, when you said, what would you say, York, Yorkshire, Yorkshire man, Yorkshire man. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, it's as weird as it sounds. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Cal. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Francis. Take Bye. care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lisa.